to career post today we will see about the apar and its mcqs apar is annual performance assessment report or annual performance appraisal report this will be useful for ipo examination ps group b examination now let us see what is the annual performance assessment report that is apar full form of apar is annual performance assessment report apar weightage on assessment on overall score of four for uh, ldc promotions and uh, six for mecps you should remember like that time limit certain time limits i will tell whenever a uh, reporting officer or will be at a time limit of 30 days within which he has to sub submit the annual reports of the uh, subordinate of i mean and whenever an official is placed under suspension and he happens to be a reporting or reviewing authority then uh, the apar should be written within the two months from suspension of the reviewing or report reporting authority or one month from the due date of apar whichever is later here whichever is later because here the reporting or reviewing authority is un under suspension so they can complete the apars of the subordinates within two months from the suspension or one month from the due date of apar and uh, there is a cvc guideline uh, also that uh, it should not be the suspended official should not be allowed to write the apar if there is uh, the major portion of the a uh, major portion is observed by him uh, he has been suspended for a major portion of the period and uh, there is an integrity column we all know in apar as per dopt om number uh, so and so uh, dated uh, uh, 23 7 2009 and uh, even 11 2 2016 generally the integrity column may be remarked as one of the three mentioned below the integrity column should contain any of the three and not anything else we should not write uh, doubtful like that we cannot like that we should write clearly these sentences you can write beyond doubt if you have no doubt you can also say that the, sin the since the sincerity of the officer is doubtful a secret note is attached that we should be attached to the officer and note not watched the officer's work for sufficient time to form a definite judgment but nothing adverse has been reported to me about the officer this third one is of, of the last choice last resort only as far as possible the officer should form an opinion on the subordinate who is placed under him and in the rarest cases the third one will be used and if the official is at a remotest place and he the officer is uh, not having a chance to observe him for a period beyond 3 months uh, after which only you can write an apar in such a case uh, that that remark can be written and there there are some uh, extraneous circumstances uh, we will discuss now how in a reporting officer or a reviewing officer is on transfer in the middle of the reporting year who will have to re uh, report it and who will have to review it let us see one by one if an officer is transferred during the middle of the reporting year he should immediately write the crs now that is apars of his subordinates in respect of the year for the period up to the his transfer provided that period is at least 6 months and the reports should be submitted to the reviewing authority who will retain them in his custody and record his remarks in the reviewing portion in the last of the reports of the year taking into account the reports of previous portions of the year also submitted to him by transferred officers at the time of their transfer say suppose if a reporting officer a has been transferred in the middle of the reporting year then he may have to submit his uh, 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 submit the apar of the of his uh, apars of all his uh, subordinates officers uh, say suppose if he has uh, as observed them at least 6 uh, months uh, in such a case he will have to write the apars and submit it to the next authority what will the next authority do the next authority that is the reviewing officer will uh, keep those reports and uh, at the end of the financial year this apars will always be written um, in the financial year only not calendar year you should remember that so at the time at the end of the financial year the reporting of the, the reviewing authority will uh, uh, based on the reports given by the previous authority he will uh, uh, make his findings in the apar okay 
and if the reviewing authority is transferred not simultaneously with the reporting of officer but after some time he will hand over such reports to his successor and the successor will review the reports if he happens to have 3 months of experience otherwise the previous reviewing authority will review the reports at the end of the year say suppose the reviewing authority uh, is transferred not simultaneously with the reporting officer say suppose review reporting officer uh, rpo we let us uh, call uh, rpo as reporting officer and uh, rvo as reviewing officer if the rpo has uh, been transferred in the middle of the uh, financial year and uh, the reviewing authority is still there and he has not been transferred in such a case what we will do uh, reviewing of authority has been transferred uh, after a month or two after the reporting officer has been transferred in such a case the reviewing authority will hand over those reports to the successor rvo2 that is the reviewing authority 2 the new one new reviewing authority or the successor new reviewing authority if he is having 3 months uh, of experience to observe that official uh, then he will write the apar if suppose uh, at the end of the year if he is not he is unable to review the report because he has not observed him uh, for a month uh, three months of experience is not there maybe because that the uh, reviewing officer new reviewing officer proceeded for leave beyond 15 days because anything any leave beyond 15 days will be deducted from the reviewing period okay reviewing or reporting period so if say, say suppose the person has joined on january 1st of the month uh, and uh, in that financial year there will be just 3 months and say suppose the reviewing officer has proceeded on leave for suppose the 16 days or 15 days in such a case uh, the observation period will be less than 3 months and in such a case uh, what will happen the previous reviewing authority will review the reports uh, at the end of the financial year and uh, submit the final uh, apar in case if he has having the reviewing authority new reviewing authority is having 3 months of observation period then the new reviewing officer will uh, prepare the apar and uh, review the apar okay and one more condition is that if however a reviewing authority retires uh, while there is no change in the reporting officer uh, then the subsequent reviewing authority does not have 3 months experience of work on the conduct of the report the reviewing portion will be left blank uh, with a suitable note recorded therein say suppose earlier we have seen that uh, if the reviewing other new reviewing authority is ha- not having 3 months experience to ob- make his observations uh, in such a case the previous reviewing authority will write the apar like that we have seen now here the condition is that the reviewing authority has retired and the new one has not observed the new other reviewing authority has joined in the month of january and uh, he has applied for 15 days leave and he has not observed uh, 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 beyond a period of 3 months uh, in such a case uh, the new reviewing authority cannot write the apar and uh, because uh, the apar is to be written at the end of the year uh, and a retired official has to write the apar within one month uh, there is no chance of the previous reviewing authority to write the apar so there and in such a circumstances uh, they, there there will not be any reviewing authority to review such a case will we have to do it is then it should be left blank by making a suitable note uh, recorded therein in such a case what they will do the reviewing portion will be kept blank and a remark uh, stating that uh, stating the circumstances uh, because of which uh, it is kept blank that should be recorded this note can be recorded by the next new reviewing authority who could not review the report because he has not he did not have even 3 months of experience uh, or by the reporting officer himself so who will have to write uh, such uh, uh, remarks uh, on the uh, on keeping such uh, report as a blank uh, in case of a reviewing authority retired uh, in such a case uh, that will be either be it should be that such remarks uh, should be written by the revi- new reviewing authority or even by the reporting authority himself these are as per the dopt dgpt in, pnt instructions uh, on 11th of september 1981 all these uh, two slides information is based on that one okay these are this uh, will clear many doubts uh, in case of transfers of the reviewing and reporting authorities and now we will see about these paro this is a online uh, 
online system for performance appraisal of the CSS, CSSS, CSCS officers maintained by the National Informatics Center. National Informatics Center has uh, uh, drawn up a sparrow and uh, this is nothing but the APARS for those uh, officers uh, in group A. The system aims to bring more transparency. That means APAR will be written in online mode uh, by that is the system maintained by National Informatics Center NIC that is built that software is built by the NIC. And the system aims to bring more transparency in recording of the performance appraisals to eliminate the loss of uh, performance appraisal reports during the transition to ensure better monitoring and timely completion of uh, PARs and to provide easy and acts access to the PRs by authorized stakeholders and uh, the officers can submit their annual immobile property returns IPRs also through Sparrow this you should remember NIC it is maintained the Sparrow online portal is uh, maintained by the maintained by whom maintained by the NIC and in the Sparrow not only apart from submitting the APAR you can also submit the immobile property returns that should be submitted by January 31st of every year pertaining to the previous year the immobile property returns in the department of post all APARs pertaining to group A officers that is SSP cadre onwards are processed in Sparrow so in group A in department of post group A officers APARs will be processed in the Sparrow Sparrow's features are it has been made mandatory for all officers in CSS, uh, CSSS, uh, CSCs in cadre of Depart Deputy Secretary and above for the online recording of APAR through Sparrow, Expand Sparrow, Smart Performance Appraisal Report Rating Online Website, Specific Performance Appraisal Report Recording Online Web, Special Performance Appraisal Recording Report Online Window, Perform, smart performance appraisal report recording online window. Your time starts now. Post your answers in the comment section. The answer is smart performance appraisal report recording online window. This you have to remember. I think this has been asked in the group B examination of 20 year. Submission of report APAR by the reporting officer to reviewing officer to be completed as per time schedule prescribed normally by 30th April, 30th May, 30th June, 30th July. Your time starts now. Please post your answer in the comment section. The answer is 30th June. By 30th June, the reporting officer... Uh, has to sub submit the report to the reviewing officer. Normally, the date by which the submission of self-appraisal to the reporting officer be completed by the officer to be reported upon with reference to writing of FR is 1st April, 10th April, 15th April, 30th April. Your time starts now. The answer is 15th April. By 15th April, the self appraisal should be submitted to the reporting office. Next question. APARS numerically graded below 4 will be given a score of 0 for the purpose of calculation of average scores of for empowerment or promotion, 5 for the purpose, uh, 4, none of these. Your time starts now. 5 seconds less than 4 less than 4 it will be treated as 0 next question the apars numerically graded between 8 and short of 10 will be rated as very good and will be given score of 8 for the purpose of calculation of average scores for empanelment and promotion very good and will be given a score of 9 outstanding and will be given a score of 9 outstanding and will be given a score of 10 your time starts now. Anything that is 8 to 10, even 10 also. The answer is the average score will be 9. Next question. PARs numerically graded between 6 and uh, short of 8 will be rated as very good and will be given a score of 7. Good will be given a score of 5. Very good will be given a score of 8. Uh, good and will be given a score of 7. Your time starts now. 6 and short of 8. 
the answer is very good and will be given a score of 7 next question what percentage of weightage on the assessment of work output and assessment of personal attributes and assessment of functional competency respectively will be overall score uh, grade on the scale on the score of 1 to 10 in a parse be based on 1 a is uh, 35 35 30 30 40 30 30 30 40 40 30 30 your time starts now out out work out work output personal attributes and functional competence what is the percentage weightage post your answer in the comment section the answer is 40 30 and 30 next question the time period for which the after which the appars relating to the retired officer may be destroyed from the date of retirement is one year two years three years five years your time starts now five seconds post your answer in the comment section the answer is 5 years. After retirement, it will be destroyed after 5 years. Next question. The time period after which the appars relating to deceased officer may be destroyed from the date of his death is 1 year, 2 years, 3 years, 5 years. Your time starts now. Earlier it is retired, it is now it is death. The answer is 2 years. Next question. What is the time limit within which the uh, reviewing officer is allowed to review the report uh, upon on his uh, subordinates from the date of his retirement or demission of his office? 10 days, 15 days, 1 month, uh, capital blank and reporting officer report will be final. Your time starts now. Reviewing officer if he retires. The answer is 1 month. Within 1 month, uh, the retired officer has to uh, write the re report next question the time limit within which the reporting officer is allowed to give the report on his uh, subordinates uh, from the date of his retirement to demission of the office is a 10 days b 15 days c 30 days d 60 days your time starts now the answer is 30 days Okay. Next one. Which of the following uh, statements are incorrect with reference to APAR? A. 1. APAR to be written within one month of expiry of the reporting period. 2. When there is no reporting officer having requisite experience, the reviewing officer will himself initiate the report of a uh, reporting officer and such a report will be reviewed by the officer above the reviewing officer. 3. A reporting officer or a reviewing officer under suspension, a par may be got, written and reviewed by the officer within 2 months from the date of his having been placed under suspension or within 1 month from the date of which was due, whichever is later. 4. No officer under suspension should be allowed to write or review the APARs on his subordinates if, the, if uh, during major part of writing or reviewing he is under suspension as he might not have full opportunity to supervise the work of the of his superiors of his subordinates option a one only b two and four only c one two three four d none of these which of the following statements are incorrect your time starts now 10 seconds i will give please post your answer in the comment section which of the following statements are incorrect the answer is none of these. None, all these statements are correct. That means within one month you have to write the APAR uh, of the reporting period. And uh, if there is no reporting officer having the requisite experience, that means uh, three three months, minimum three months. If in such a case, then the next uh, reviewing authority will write the will take the role of reporting officer and uh, reviewing it will be reviewed by the officer uh, immediate officer above the reviewing officer. And a reporting officer, if he is suspended less than two within two months from the date of suspension, or within one from one month from the date of such report due, whichever is later will be will have to be written. And furthermore, as for the CBC guidelines, no official under suspension uh, if major part of writing or reviewing is under suspension. Okay. Reporting officer A uh, for an employee B has not availed any leave and observed for full 12 months uh, in the financial year 1920 
here some case is given you have to identify in case the reviewing officer ob see observed fully for, from 14 2019 was retired on 31 12 2019 and the new reviewing officer d joined on 31 12 2019 afternoon and had availed of uh, el without mc for 17 days from 15 3 20 to 31 3 2020 and then the par for the whole period of 19 20 of the employee b will be reviewed by whom a yeah, reviewing officer c who has maximum period of observation than d and as d has observation of less than 3 months b reviewing officer d who's uh, who last officer uh, who is the last officer at the time of end of the financial year reporting year and c is retired c reporting officer a who has maximum period of observation than c and d and c is retired and d has less than 3 months of observation d kept blank with a suitable note by either reporting officer or the reviewing officer your time starts now this is an application type of question try to answer in the comment section i will give you few more minutes also to think over this is a practical question already i have said uh, what is the ruling position regarding this one in the beginning of this video okay 5 4 3 Two one, the answer is it should be kept blank with a suitable note by either reviewing officer or reporting officer because uh, here uh, A is the reporting officer of employee B and uh, here the reviewing officer A has uh, retired from service and the new one D has uh, has joined as a reviewing officer but uh, D is not having the as has availed some seventeen days of E L. Uh, so the minimum period of observation has been less than 3 months for d so he cannot write the par and but the reviewing officer previous reviewing officer has retired in such a case what was the rule telling what was the rule what the rule says it should be kept blank with a suitable note either by the reviewing officer or the reporting officer okay next question Reporting officer A for an employee B after working for six months was transferred to another place on one ten two thousand nineteen. In case the reviewing officer C observed from one four two thousand nineteen was also transferred on twenty five twelve two thousand nineteen to another place and the new reviewing officer D joined on thirty one twelve two thousand nineteen and he has availed a year of eighteen days from fourteen three to thirty one three and then a part of the whole period of nineteen twenty of the employee B will be reviewed by. Reporting officer A, as he has observed for a period of uh, period more than C and D. Reviewing officer C, as he has observed for more than three months. Reviewing officer D, as he has observed for more than three months, and the last person to note his findings in the financial year two thousand nineteen and twenty. D. Report A will be kept blank as the reviewing authority has not observed for more than three months. Our time starts now. please post your answer in the comment section i'll give few more seconds 5 4 3 2 one the answer is reviewing officer c as he has observed for more than 3 months here uh, the reporting officer is a for b and uh, in case the reviewing officer c has transferred uh, b is transferred after 6 uh, months observing 6 months and uh, this uh, c also the reviewing officer c also transferred and d joined he was he has uh, availed leave so less than 3 months for d he cannot write and in such a case reviewing officer c because he has observed more more than 3 years 3 months uh, and he has not retired at uh, he can write the apart at the end of the at the end of the year okay next question 
The reporting officer A for an employee B after working for six months was transferred to another place on 110 2019. In case the reviewing officer C also transferred on 25 12 2019 to another place and the new officer joined on 31 12 2019 and had not applied any leave up to 31 3 2020, then the APAR for the whole period of 1920 of the employee B will be reviewed by reviewing officer C as he has observed major portion of 1920. Reviewing Officer D as he has observed at least 3 months in 1920. Reporting Officer A as he has observed more period than C and D. APAR will be kept blank and reviewed by none. Your time starts now. Please post your answer in the comment section if you know it. I will give 5 more seconds. The same question but... Uh, little bit changes all these things so that you will be familiar with what is the role 5 4 3 2 1 the answer is reviewing officer D as he has observed 3 months in 1920 of course A has uh, transferred and uh, C also has transferred and D has joined but D has a time of enough of time of 3 months to observe the official uh, B so D can do at the end of the year. Review the end at the end of the year. Next question. Suppose a reporting officer A for an employee B after working for six months was transferred to another place on 110 2019. In case the reviewing officer C was also transferred on 5 1 2020 to another place and the new officer D joined on 6 1 2020, then the upper of the employee B will be reviewed by whom? Reviewing officer D, reviewing officer C. Reporting Officer A, APAR will be reviewed by none and left blank as D has less than 3 months of observation on B. Your time starts now. Okay, 5 more seconds I'll give. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The answer is reporting officer C because uh, uh, the new officer reviewing officer uh, uh, will be reviewing officer C option B is correct answer so the reviewing officer D has joined on 6 1 2020 20, that means he is not having enough of time uh, of three months in that financial year left over uh, up to March 31st it is less than three months so D cannot write and in such a case, the reviewing officer C has, who has observed up to 5 1 2020 from 1 4 2019, he can review the APAR of B. Next question. The reporting officer A of an employee B has joined on the new station on 31 12 2019. A has availed 17 days of continuous EL without MC in 2020 before 31. 320 20 B has not availed any type of leave during this period in such a situation what would be the correct procedure of writing a par for employee B uh, by reporting officer A for that financial year 2019-20 A should not write a par for B as it is less than 3 months of observation A should write a par for B as it is not less than 3 months of observation A should write a par for B with the permission of the reviewing officer of B and A should write a par for B after 15 days for, for of further observation in 2021 in the next year. Your time starts now. I will give 5 more seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Post your answer in the comment section. The answer is... A should not write the APAR for B as it is less than 3 months of observation because uh, B has not availed any type of leave but uh, A has availed of leave uh, before uh, some 17 days he has uh, taken charge of uh, even though it is uh, presumed that he has taken charge on 1-1-2020 also 17 days EL means uh, in such a case a cannot write the APAR. Okay. Next question. Which of the following statements are incorrect with reference to APAR? 
one report for entire year can be reviewed if the reviewing officer had observed for a short period of 3 to 4 months and no part and so no part report necessary in such cases review remarks of reviewing officer are treated as final and only these will be taken into account by the dpc etc no report should be written unless a reporting officer has at least 3 months experience on which to base his report fourth one the responsibility of obtaining a pars in parts uh, owing to the case of transfer of the reporting officer should be of that of the head of the department or the head of the office option a 1 2 3 4 are incorrect here the question is incorrect b 1 and 4 are incorrect c 2 and 3 are incorrect d none of these is incorrect your time starts now please post your answer in the comment section The answer is none of these is incorrect. See, whenever there is a report of the entire can be reviewed, then no part report is required. And review remarks of a reviewing officer will be final in case for a DPC and all. And no report is should be written unless there are three months of experience is there for a reporting officer. And the responsibility of, uh, of, of obtaining the APARs uh, on transfer by the reporting officer will lie on the head of the department or head of the office concerned. Next question. The timeline within which the reporting officer who is transferred during the year should write APARs for all the staff under his control up to the date of his transfer is 1 to 2 weeks of his transfer, 2 to 3 weeks of his transfer. 3 to 4 weeks of his transfer, 3 to 5 weeks of his transfer. Your time starts now. The answer is 3 to 5 weeks of his transfer. Next question. For retirement it is 1 month, transfer is 3 to 5 weeks. What is the benchmark prescribed for grant of financial upgradation under MACPC as per the 7th CPC? A. Good for all posts. B. Very good for all posts. C. Average for all posts. D. None of these. Your time starts now. Benchmark for MACPs under 7th CPC. The answer is very good for all posts. That is 6 and above. Even 6 is also very good. Next question. Which of the following statements with reference to APAR is incorrect? 1. Maintenance of character roles is not enjoined by any statute or rules uh, framed under Article 309 of Constitution. 2. Principles regarding the record of APAR and communication of adverse remarks uh, have been laid down in administrative instructions uh, issued from time to time. 3. At the time of record of APARs, uh, the employee is not entitled to any hearing. 4. The time period prescribed in the circular uh, for communication of adverse entry is not mandatory but directive. If the adverse entry is not communicated in time, it is not wiped out. A. 1 only. B. 4 only. C. 1, 2, 3, 4. D. None of the above. Here the question is which of the following statements are incorrect. Your time starts now. The answer is none of the above. All of these are correct. Maintenance of character rules is not enjoined by any statute or rules framed under the Article 309 of Constitution. And record of APAR and communication of adverse remarks are just administrative instructions. And at the time of record of APAR, employee is not entitled to any hearing. And he can make a representation that is different after before writing we cannot. The time prescribed in circular for communication of adverse entry is not mandatory but a directive. It is not mandatory circulation. So if adverse entry is not communicated in time, it is not wiped out. That means still it will prevail. That apart entry will still till prevail. Next question. What is the time limit within which a memorial or appeal against the rejection of representation against adverse remarks in a par is to be allowed from the date of such a rejection? A. 1 month. B. 2 months. C. 3 months. D. 6 months. Your time starts now. The answer is 6 months. Okay. 
appeal the time limit within which the decision of the competent authority on adverse remarks in appar and final grading will be communicated to the concerned officer is 7 days 10 days 15 days 30 days your time starts now the answer is 15 days within 15 days the adverse remarks and final grading should be communicated what is the time limit within which a, a representation against the adverse remarks in apar should be decided by the competent authority from the date of submission of such a representation 10 days 14 days 15 days 30 days your time starts now representation against adverse remarks please post your answer in the comment section the answer is 30 days within 30 days the representation should be decided by the competent authority which of the following uh, statements are not true with reference to apar the representation by an employee on adverse remarks in apar will lie to one the authority immediately superior to the co- counter signing authority if any or to the reporting officer two if the immediate superior superior has already reviewed the apar in question and also expressed his views either by agreeing or disagreeing with the adverse remarks recorded and accepted by the counter signing authority in that event the representation lies to the next higher authority 3 if necessary the competent authority to decide the representation of apar entries may consult the reporting officer and the counter signing officer a 3 only is not correct b 1 2 3 are not correct D one and two are only not correct. D none of the above are not correct. Your time starts now. The answer is none of the above. That means all of these are correct. Okay. Next question: How many representations uh, maximum from an employee are allowed against the adverse remarks made in a par within the prescribed period from the date of communication of such remarks? Uh, one representation, two, three, five representations. Your time starts now. How many maximum representations are allowed on a par adverse remarks of a par? Post your answer in the comment section. The answer is one representation. Next. What is the time limit within which the adverse remarks in APAR are to be communicated by the employee? Communicated to the employee from the date they are recorded. Thirty, ten days, fifteen days, one month, two months. Your time starts now. Five seconds. The answer is one month. Within one month, the adverse remarks should be communicated to the employee after they after they have been recorded. The time limit within which uh, any representation against the entries in the APAR can be made by the concerned officer or employee from the date of receipt of APAR is seven days, fourteen days, fifteen days, thirty days. Your time starts now. Representation within which uh, on receipt of APAR, how many within how many days he has to represent? The answer is fifteen days. Under the system of writing APAR, every official, except in case of clerical and other categories, uh, doing repetitive nature, at the end of the each year should uh, submit a brief resume of work done by him during the year, bringing out any special achievements not exceeding. Brief resume here means uh, self appraisal. A hundred words, two hundred words, three hundred words, five hundred words. Your time starts now. Self appraisal should be or brief resume. Resume should be. How many words? The answer is three hundred words. Okay, it should not exceed three hundred words. Which of the following statements are incorrect with reference to writing a par? One, every warning, reprimand, displeasure issued in writing need not automatically find place in a par. Only cases in which, despite such warning, etc., the officer has not improved or appropriate mention of such warning, etc., may be made in the par. Three. Remark like doubtful character complaints received above about taking illegal gratification are permissible. Reference to specific incidents may be made, if at all, only by way of a general nature, 
example inefficiency dilatoriness lack of initiative or judgment etc a 3 and 4 are incorrect incorrect it is the question b 1 2 3 are incorrect c 3 only is incorrect d 1 and 4 are incorrect your time starts now please post your answer in the comment section the answer is 3 only that is the doubtful character we should not write in the integrity column as doubtful character or complaints received about taking illegal gratification like that you should enquire and you should come to a conclusion and say write about the apar write in the apar and we have already we have seen that there are three elements that are allowed for integrity part writing integrity part in the apar okay this this is not allowed apar should be written invariably at the end of the year which must be done within 1 month 2 months 3 months 6 months your time starts now the answer is 1 month okay next apars graded between 8 and 10 will be rated as very good outstanding extra outstanding good your time starts now the answer is outstanding wherever there is any gap in the apar during a particular reporting period it is the responsibility of the officer in charge for maintaining the apar to place dash in the apar doiser for the relevant period a blank apar p no report certificate c no action required D copy of previous apar your time starts now when ever there is a gap in apar during a particular period whose responsibility it is uh, the responsibility of the in charge to place what it is the no report certificate what is the weightage of for an assessment of personal attributes and functional competency while rep- while writing apar in respect of officers 60% each 50% each 40% each 30% each your time starts now personal attributes and functional competency the answer is 30% each the remaining thing is 40% next in the case of uh, work output is 40% in case of uh, central government uh, servants uh, who are deputed to other departments uh, state governments or uh, on foreign service the annual performance uh, assessment report should be maintained by parent departments borrowing departments either a or b none of this your time starts now the answer is parent departments parent departments have to maintain the apart one more question i will ask aps uh, who has to maintain whether it is uh, aps or uh, uh, the department post your answer in the comments section who will write the pars and who will maintain the pars these two questions you tell post your answer in the comments section for aps 636 question that apars graded between 6 and short of 8 will be rated as very good outstanding extra outstanding good your time starts now 5 seconds the answer is very good next question what is the weightage on assessment of work output while writing apar in respect of officers 60% 50 40 30 your time starts now 5 seconds only please post your answer in the comment section if you know it the answer is 40% for output it is 40% for remaining thing functional competency and the other one it is 30% the annual performance assessment report on integrated financial advisor would be initiated by the cvo of the concerned ministry or department directly by the minister in charge of the ministry secretary of the administrative ministry and the or department uh, immediate superior of the financial advisor your time starts now who will write the apar of ifa the answer is secretary of the administrative ministry or department next question annual performance uh, assessment reports of chief vigilance officer who are working on a full time basis shall be written by secretary or minister minister secretary of the ministry department apart for cvo is not required 
immediate superior of the ceo none of this your time starts now the answer is secretary of the ministry or a department will write for a ceo next question where a government servant has only one supervisory level above him in as in case of personal staff attached to the officer so the upper assessment will be at the level of dash only reviewing officer reporting officer accepting officer superior officer your time starts now the answer is reporting officer only okay next question with regard to apar the reporting officer and reviewing level officers are required to have at least how many months experience of supervising the work and conduct of the government servant reported upon before they can record their assessment 3 months 1 month 6 months 2 months your time starts now at least how many months experience of supervising the work and conduct of the government servant reported upon should be there for writing a report The answer is three months. Minimum three months should be there. Otherwise, NRC no report. Next, where for a period of a par there is no reporting officer with the requisite experience to initiate the report, then what action will be caused? A par for that period will not be written. A par will be treated as closed by keeping no report certificate. Reviewing officer himself may initiate the reporting as the reporting officer. None of the above. Your time starts now. whenever there is no reporting officer with the requisite experience uh, of 3 months or so what will be done the answer is reviewing officer will himself initiate the report as a reporting officer and it will be reviewed by the immediate superior of the reviewing officer okay next question immediate superior of reviewing of government servant uh, who writes apar is known as controlling officer reporting officer reviewing officer accepting authority your time starts now the answer is reporting officer next question errand leave for a period of uh, more than how many days can be deducted from the total period spent on any post for the purpose of computing the period of 3 months uh, which is relevant for writing a uh, entries in the apar 10 days 30 days 15 days 5 days your time starts now that means there is a period of 3 months uh, minimum 3 months should be there to any reviewing authority or reporting authority to write an apar in that day uh, there is a leave uh, beyond which uh, it cannot be written it is 15 days if there is any leave el uh, beyond 15 days uh, in the period of observation that should be deducted okay if a reporting or reviewing officer is under suspension when the annual performance assessment report has become due to be written or reviewed it may be a written reviewed by the officer concerned within 2 months from the date of his uh, having been placed under suspension written reviewed by the officer concerned within 1 month from the date on which the report was due c a or b whichever is later d none of the above your time starts now the answer is a or b whichever is later next question and there is also cvv guidelines that it, they should not write up or if the period of observation is a, to a major part 44 what which among the following uh, with regard to apar is are correct a there is no objection to two or more independent apar reports being written during a year by different reporting officers b in such a case each reporting officer has at least 3 months experience on which he can base his report when a report has to be written by the reporting officer which is under a transfer it should be written at the time of transfer or immediately thereafter and not deferred till the end of the year d all of the work are correct your time starts now the answer is all of these are correct okay next question which of the following uh, statements are correct as per dopt om uh, dated 23 7 2019 and uh, 
2016 the integrity column may be marked as 1 beyond doubt 2 since the integrity of the officer is doubtful a secret note is attached 3 not watched the officer's work for sufficient time to form a definite judgment but nothing adverse has been reported to me about the officer a 1 and 2 only are correct b 2 and 3 only are correct c 1 and 3 only are correct d 1 2 3 are correct your time starts now in integrity column which of the following can be written the answer is 1 2 3 and 1 2 3 all these three are correct which of the following uh, is the minimum score that makes you eligible for grant of financial upgradation under mscp as per 7th cpc a 4 4.1 c is 6 d is 6.1 your time starts now what is the minimum score that you so that you are eligible for grant of financial upgradation the answer is you can uh, assume that 4 only 4.1 only 6 only 6.1 only the answer is 6 only 6 and above it is allowed thank you for more marks and higher ranking subscribe to career post how do you like the video just leave a comment thank you do subscribe to career post for getting